Hey everybody, good morning, it's Pete. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast and today we're gonna to talk about my favorite trading scan. It's the trading scan I run first thing every morning and it's the scan that separates chart readers from tape readers and tape readers into traders. It's the one that we are looking for stocks before they have the big long sustained moves. Stocks that have smart money activity today. It's one of those things where I'm constantly asked, like, what is the smart money? How do you know what the smart money is doing? And if I really had to give it a definition, the smart money is the money that can move the market. It's not necessarily a person. It's not necessarily like one hedge fund or anything like that. It's the collective market at the same time where all of that money is on the same page. Now, sure, there's definitely forces behind the market that could move a stock and maybe something that's not as liquid, but what, it's really a catalyst whether it's earnings or a change in the company or some, or change in the industry or something along those lines, all of a sudden the right money at the right time gets involved, whether it's adding shares or dumping shares, they leave footprints. And that's the biggest thing that I want to, I want to look for. Now, if you remember the boot camp or if you've taken my training before, you know that I'm looking for very specific activity when I'm, I'm making the leap into tape reading. I'm looking for accumulation or distribution, which happens a little bit more over time, and that's different types of price action and volume. But the very first thing that I'm looking for on a day-to-day -day basis, which is in this scan, is I am looking for energy. And I define an energy candlestick as a large green or a large red candlestick happening somewhere specific on the chart, and it's either starting a new move or it's ending a move. So think about that. I'm looking for the beginning of a potential new wave of order flow and new waves of order flow create these trends and they happen over time, but they start with these explosions in price action and very specific types of price action. The other one is kind of interesting too. The uh, two types of energy candlesticks that I look for, number one is fuel, fuel starts a new move. And the second one is exhaustion. Exhaustion is sometimes known as capitulation or a cleanup print, but it's usually a parabolic, very fast momentum move at the end of momentum. And obviously the question is, how do you know when momentum ends? Well, yeah, you have to get a little experience on the charts, and that's the whole reason we want to trade together over time. So we're going to take a look at the scan first. I'm going to give you the criteria. Uh, we're going to use finviz.com, which is a uh, stock scanner that has both a free uh, and a paid version. What I'm going to show you is easily done in the free one. It's, going to, it's my minimum criteria that I use. And like I said, this is the first scan that I run every single morning. Um, but what I want to do now, I'm going to take it a step further. We're going to take, and it's ironic that um, today the scan has a lot of names. Last Thursday and Friday, I think it had maybe like seven names in it. Today it has 35, <laughs> so it really bumped up, which is a good day to give an example of this demonstration. So again, I wanna make it clear, this is how you spot the smart money, or at least the very beginning of smart money. This is how when you know something's changing in a stock, this is how you know attention is now on a stock. Uh, and it's not necessarily these are the stocks you're going in and you're trading immediately, it's giving you a list. You need to get the, the skill, the education, the training to know how to take ideas and then say, are these trading ideas? There's a big difference. There's a big difference between something hitting a moving average, something breaking out, something say an explosion uh, like we're about to show you, uh, and it's actually a trading idea. So you're gonna see how we take the list, give the list specific criteria, and then take those names and then take it deeper into a chart. So we're gonna actually export the list and put it into a different charting platform, uh, which I use TradingView. It's a very simple one to use. And then uh, we'll see if we have ideas from there. And I'm gonna use one really good example uh, from a trade that we called out actually about a week ago. So we're gonna take a look at the charts now. So let's actually head over to the screen. And we are going to start out with finviz.com. So if we start out on finviz, you're gonna to go to the screener. So you'll, you'll normally see this homepage here. Uh, and then we're gonna to go to screener. So I have this, set up you can see it's literally the first scan that i run every day so what is the criteria now when you're using finviz you probably have to click over here click all to get all of this criteria listed out so i'm only looking at stocks i am looking at stocks over ten dollars i'm looking at stocks that have an average true range of at least a dollar fifty so that means that from low to high on average over the last 14 days the low to high gives me some opportunity to make money 
minimum the dollar fifty. Some of them are, but it's dollar fifty or more. Uh, and this is an interesting one here. It's average volume over the last thirty days of two million shares. I want liquidity. I want daily consistent activity by uh, large players in the market where there's a lot of shares traded every day. This allows me to get in, get out at very good prices. Where if I happen to need to market out, which I very rarely do. There's a good chance there's going to be shares at every price level and I won't knock it down on myself and take a big loss on a profitable trade. So that's my criteria. You might not like that criteria. It might not be perfect for you, but you know what? It works for me. <laughs> I'm not going to change it. That's what it is. And uh, it, meets all, it, it checks off all the boxes for me to put it into the list. Now, the last thing here is this one. This is interesting. Relative volume. This is telling me which stocks yesterday or whatever day I happen to pull the scan up for traded two times its normal volume. So that's telling me right now, these stocks had attention. These stocks had something unusual happen in those. So now I'm gonna take this list of stocks and work it down. So I wanna be clear, this is the first scan I run every single morning. I wanna know instantly which stocks had attention yesterday. If something changed, something interesting is going on in those stocks. So we have 35 stocks and what we did now is we exported that list and we brought it in over here. And so there's 35 stocks. So I'm just gonna sort it by um, least expensive to most expensive. And I'm gonna start out with this stock, which is one that, the, the one that I just mentioned that we actually called out about a week and a half ago. And just from basic technical analysis, basic chart reading, you might be like, all right, not, not that much going on. But something changed over here. Now you might, after the fact, you're know, kind of looking at it and be like, oh yeah, that's easy to tell. But the stock's going down, stock's going down. And then all of a sudden, this day happens and it came up in my scanner and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Huh, something's going on. So you can see it's an energy candlestick, but here's where it really got interesting. And this is really gonna blow your mind. Look at that. This is the difference between chart reading and just saying support, resistance, uptrend, downtrend. There's so much more to identifying opportunities that have attention that could potentially have an edge. So now we work this a little bit further and I'm like, okay, Oh, wait, big volume again on that update. So now we're combining volume with the type of price action with where it's happening. So we're starting to see accumulation here. We're starting to see energy candlesticks. And then we have another huge volume spike. So now in our world, we just had an inside candlestick breakout into two well-bid candlesticks with massive volume. The most simple thing you learn in the boot camp, right out of the gate, right? Can't snap right now. <laughs> So we start to move forward and now we start to call out to the community. Something's going on in this stock. Some, even despite the fact that it does not have order flow, something's changing. Something's going on in the stock. Somebody is starting to build a position in this stock. The smart money now has its attention on this stock. So this is the type of trade where now we went inside, inside, two days of consolidation after three days of energy to the stock rallying while the market is selling off and getting hit. So these are the deeper insights into learning how to be a tape reader that take you to the next level. So now we started to build a position in the stock last week. So now we're gonna to start to look at some other interesting plays and where these ideas happen. So obviously Kodak has been in the news, but what's interesting about Kodak is it had news here spiked we talk about it over and over again, do the buyers come back? And this time the answer was no, there was really bad follow-up news. But now you can see the volume is starting to expand again. So we're not going to jump in right away because the story uh, last time didn't have any legs. So we're not going to get caught like a lot of people did up in the 50s there, which is crazy. Uh, but we're going to keep it on our radar. Next, we're going to take a look at Oracle. Oracle trading massive volume spikes above a breakout level. Now, what's interesting about the Oracle trade here is massive volume spikes without price action moving is typically distribution. And typically that means it heads in the opposite direction. So there's a lot of attention here, big volume without price action. So that's actually distribution. It's telling us the opposite of wanting to get involved and in buying the stock. The best case scenario would have been this breakout here pausing on significantly lighter volume, but it did not happen. Interesting. Peloton, if you noticed last week, we actually said that Peloton is showing uh, distribution type price action where we are now having whippy type price action with heavier volume and we called a top in Peloton last week. So we'll see how that unfolds. So you see we're starting to add the clues 
that set up individual trades. Now the codex trade, the CODX trade led a little bit different uh, price action into ending a downtrend, starting well bid candlesticks, big spikes on the up days, very lighter volume on the down days. In this case here, we're not seeing a push and an orderly pause. We're not seeing a push and an orderly pause. We're getting this. This is very choppy. Choppy volume, heavier volume after a large move to the upside, which in this case was all time highs, typically is a top. So we'll see how that unfolds. All right, DraftKings. Now, DraftKings is a little bit different. We're seeing momentum follow through to new levels. This is different from what we just saw in Peloton. DraftKings is actually heavier volume on the breakout, and we're seeing well bid and following through. So the next trade, this is not going into my list necessarily today because of how far and how fast it traveled, but the next trade would be a lighter volume pause looking for the next push. Uh, let's go to Etsy. Etsy would be an interesting one. So look at Etsy's spike in volume after this move to the downside. So this could be smart money stepping back in and stopping this downtrend. So you see we started to get a little bit heavier volume here and now a big day to the upside. So what are we looking for? We have attention, now we're looking for follow through. It's one thing to get one day of energy, but it's another thing to get follow through on the energy. So this is gonna go into my watch list today as a stock to pay attention to. And you can see that we work our way down where we start to put the pieces together. So play is an interesting one here. It had earnings, but it's not really, it's not breaking out, it's not after momentum, it's not consolidating. So this volume really doesn't mean anything to me. I wanna see it happening at a certain spot. This is kind of in the middle of nowhere. All right, zoom, increase in volume, well bid candlestick breaking out, and you can see it's getting some follow through on a day where the market, uh, the futures are actually just getting pounded. So what's kind of interesting now is you start to put the pieces together to where does the price action happen. So I just wanna give you a little bit of a heads up on how we do this every single day and how I do to my scans every day. I'm looking for smart money, I'm looking for footprints, I'm looking for where they're taking action. Once I spot where they're taking action, if it's happening in a significant place, is it happening after a downtrend like we saw in Codex, and all of a sudden, huge energy candlesticks with volume and green candlesticks ending that downtrend and being followed up by tighter pauses on light volume? Is it Peloton where we're seeing it just reached all time highs, but now it's having these whippy, really uh, unreadable type price action where it went up and down and up and down or heavier volume, and it's not that clean, tight, orderly move where the bids are holding it there and it's not allowing it to go down and it's not happening on light volume. We're seeing the opposite of that. We're seeing topping price action in Peloton. Then you see uh, DraftKings where it's going up, it's on momentum, it's holding higher highs, higher lows, closing near the highs on heavier volume. So the next move, the next trade that we're setting up in DraftKings, because it has the attention of the smart money right now, is we're waiting for them to take a break. We're waiting for that stock to pause. We want that stock to pause on light volume then we set up the next swing trade in that direction. So you can see that smart money leaves clues. When those clues are obvious, that's when we set up trades. And from day to day, week to week, we start to notice energy, fuel, exhaustion, accumulation, distribution. Once you spot these simple patterns, just by looking at volume and where that volume is happening on the price charts, it becomes fun. It becomes you putting the pieces together. All of a sudden, it's not a mystery anymore. All of a sudden, it's not confusing or overwhelming. And matter of fact, it becomes easier because now you know exactly what you're looking for. So this is just a tiny step of what it takes to move from frustrated and reading charts and not really understanding how to make money to only looking for something specific. And you say, well, until I see that, I don't see anything to do because the smart money is not involved in that stock. Once you start to put these pieces together, then the last thing we do together is we, lurk, we work on what I call the B method between entry and exit. And that's really where the money's made. So this is a way to find some good ideas but then you need to learn the, uh, how to manage those trades, which happens between the entry, the exit, and position management. A lot going on here, but it's kind of fun to put the pieces together. This is a really super simple way to scan for ideas that have smart money attention. Leave me a comment below and definitely subscribe, subscribe to the channel. If you have some questions about this, let me know. Have a great day, everybody.